Good morning. And a warm welcome to everyone here this morning, especially to any visitors who may be worshipping with us. We hope you find peace and blessing in our time of worship here this morning. Oh, hello. <laughs> what a nice surprise, me, Lucy. <laughs> So just to draw your attention to a few intimations, um, the prayer box is in the vestibule and if you can write your prayer requests at home and pop them in the box when you come to church then that would be great. Come and sing, our dementia friendly singing group meets in the church hall this Tuesday from 2 to 4 and all are welcome. We need some extra drivers to collect members from Och and Loch and bring them to church on a Sunday and take them home. And this would be on a rota basis. Uh, you'd be required to help once in every five weeks. So if you can assist in this important ministry, then please speak to Anne Willett. Would all elders note that there is a meeting of the Kirk Session this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, led by facilitator Alison Fenton from Glasgow Presbytery to discuss the future mission plan. And um, So that's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock here in the church. And also there's a cup of tea after the service today, so please stay behind for some time of fellowship if you are able. So thanks be to God for the work of this church in this parish. So let's now quieten our hearts and our minds as the choir sing the introit. Also, um, sorry, I forgot to intimate that uh, there's a, a funeral on Friday. I'll mention it, about it more before our prayers of intercession. Um, but it's to be a, a, a big funeral uh, with ambulance service present. Um, so we need some people to help on Friday at 11 o'clock here in the church just to help with the um, choreography of, of uh, that service, helping people in and out. So if anybody can... Uh, have some, has some free time on Friday at 11 o'clock um, if you could uh, just wait with Alistair at the back of the church there after the service and we'll have a quick meeting. Thank you. So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather here in the sanctuary or at home online or in the phone line to worship you, the one who created each one of us, who breathed life into us and who walks with us each and every day of our lives. Holy God, we praise you for the glory of this new day, for the joys which the month of June brings the smell of freshly cut grass, the blooming of roses, the heat from the sunshine, the lighter and longer evenings, the trees abundant in green foliage, heralding a new season and offering us new hope. Holy God, we praise you for the gift of other people, for friends and family, for neighbor and colleague, those we pass on the street each day, 
those who live beside us, those who serve us in the local shops, and those who deliver our post and other goods. We praise you for them and for the way you have created humanity to need one another and to form community together. Holy God, this day we praise you for our Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, for her long and faithful reign, for her faith in you, steadfast and sure, an anchor in her life through good times and bad. And we praise you for the inspiration she brings and the sense of constancy she has brought to her role and her calling over these last 70 years. Holy God, to follow you is a lifelong commitment. And there are times when we drift away from your side, times when we fail to listen to your still small voice or heed your help and advice, times when we choose to rely upon our own insight and understanding and stifle the spirit at work within us. And as a result, we become unanchored and unsettled. Holy God, forgive us. And as we worship you this day, open our hearts to your spirit, which forever dwells within us, guiding and comforting, strengthening, strengthening and leading and inspiring, helping us to take the right next step as we navigate the complexities and at times the confusion of life. We ask these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus, who when he lived on this earth, he taught us to pray saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, Lucy. Oh gosh, you've got your teeth missing. <laughs> so what age are you now? Six, are you? You big girl. Lovely to see you. Yeah, really lovely to see you. Hello, Sienna. She's playing with our cups. It's our favourite toy. <laughs> so do you know what a special weekend this is, this weekend? Who are we celebrating this weekend? I can't remember. I'll give you a clue. The Queen, that's right, the Queen. Now this is Anne Bells and apparently it's, don't know, you press a button Anne or no, it's solar powered and she sort of waves at you. I don't know, wait a minute to see. See her waving her, well she's not really, oh, is she? Yeah, yeah there you go, ever so slightly, she's waving at you, isn't she? Yeah, gosh. And you know, I've got some interesting facts about the Queen's wave, her greeting. Because the Queen has got to greet people in a certain way. Now, someone who knows a lot about greeting people is the Queen. Saying hello to people. And... Uh, She's reigned for over 70 years. Is that not amazing? 70 years. Longer than any British king or queen in history. She became queen when she was only 25. And during her reign, she's visited countries all over the world. And she's had to do that little wave. It's working well, Anna, actually. It's just ever so slight, very dignified. And uh-huh, yep. She's greeted millions of people during the course of her life. She's shaken hands with many famous people, including Lady Gaga. You heard of Lady Gaga? 
Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, other people who have shaken hands with the Queen are thousands and thousands of people that are not celebrities, but just as important. If you ever met the Queen, if you were to shake her hand, do you think that you would put your hand out to shake her hand first? Like that? If you were the Queen and I was somebody in the crowd, should I go, if I was, the, like, if I was somebody in the crowd and you were the Queen, should I go like that to you as the Queen? Because you're the Queen. What do you think? Yeah, that's right. We should wait for the Queen to offer her hand to us first. So there you go. I didn't know that. But anyway, the Queen, you'll notice when you watch the royal family, when the, the Greek people, they just spend maybe a, a, a split second speaking to people, a very tiny amount of time. But in that time, they look at the person in the eyes and they treat that person as if they were the only person that was there. And that's a very good thing to do because it makes the person feel important. If you ever see the Queen in the television or the royal family, especially Catherine and William, they actually kneel down when they see children. So they would kneel down to speak at the child's height. And they look into their eye and they speak to them as if they were, well, they are very important and they show that. So that's one of the things that they do. So the Queen treats people whether it's a king or somebody famous or even somebody in the crowd, she treats them always, always the same when she greets somebody. She always looks them in the eye and she just spends a few seconds just speaking to them. And uh, it's, it's really nice. So will I leave her here? You want to I'll leave her beside you? Yeah, yeah. There you go, you can watch her waving. So I've got a wee quiz now, and this is for everybody, so let's see how good you are um, on this day of the Platinum, well, this weekend of the Platinum Jubilee. See how good you are at your knowledge of the royal family and the Queen. Right, in which year was Queen Elizabeth born? Just shout it out. Oh, well, actually, maybe put hands up. Who thinks 1916? Oh, there's the answer there, 1926. Who said that? <laughs> Wasn't she a lovely baby? Right, the next question. What are the names of the Queen's four children? Charles, Elizabeth, Edward, George. Charles, Anne, Andrew, Edward. Charles, Mary, George, Henry. George, Charlotte, Edward, Zara. Is it the first, second, or the third, or the fourth? Second. That's right. I think we all know that. The Queen's eldest child is Prince Charles, born 1948, who is heir apparent to the throne. Princess Anne was born in 1950. Prince Andrew was born in 1960. And Prince Edward, 1964. So there's the answer. The Queen has owned more than 30 corgis during her reign. My goodness. What was the name of her first corgi? It was Su Gosh, everybody knows that. Yes, it was Susan. I think that's right. Yes, yeah, Susan. It was given to her as a present on her 18th birthday. Okay, the next question. Which organization did the Queen join during the Second World War? Was it the Red Cross? The Auxiliary Territorial Service, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, or the Women's Royal Naval Service? What do you think? Naval Service? Okay, let's see what the answer is. Auxiliary Territorial Service. During her time with the ATS, she took a training course in driving and vehicle maintenance at the major garrison of Aldershot. When did the Queen assume the throne? When was she crowned Queen? First one, second one, third one, fourth one, what do you think? First one, okay, second of June, 1950, no? The fourth one, 6th of February, 1952. The then princess was on vacation with Prince Philip in Kenya when news of King George VI's death reached the couple. 
what was the name of the Royal Yacht that was in service from 1954 until 1997? Good for you, Lucy. Well done. Britannia, that's right, Britannia. Well done, Lucy. <laughs> what is the Queen's favourite cake? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Victoria sponge, okay. Dundee cake. There you go, Dundee cake. <laughs> what is the Queen's favourite colour? Purple, blue or green? What do you think? Lucy, what do you think? Purple, blue or green? Purple, okay. Let's see if it's purple. Blue, nearly. Nearly, Lucy. Blue. In which year did Queen Elizabeth launch a British monarchy page on Facebook? Poor Queen, she couldn't get away from Facebook. Sign of the times. It was 2010 and she's got 138k followers. Wow. Right, what does the sovereign's orb held in the monarch's right hand during the coronation ceremony represent? Lucy, that's our, that's our, it's a big, beautiful stick that she holds, and it's covered in jewels and pearls, and it's just gorgeous. So, what do you think it represents? The Christian world. And there you go, there, there's the picture of it, Lucy. You see it? And it's got this beautiful circle at the bottom. It's called an orb, and it represents the Christian world. And is that the last one? Yes, that's the last one. So I think you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> well, that was good fun. So, as I say, Lucy, the Queen is, she's a very special lady. And uh, if you ever get to meet her, you might, might meet one day, you might get to meet maybe Kate or William, or you never know, you might be somewhere special where the royal family are there. And uh, who, who is it that shakes your hand first? Can you remember? Would you shake the Queen's hand? Would you go put your hand out to the Queen? No. She would do it to you, wouldn't she? Yeah, the Queen would do it to you. And then she would spend some time just looking, at, looking into your eyes and asking you how you were and what you, what you liked. Because that's, um, that's what she does because everybody is important, and that's part of her Christian faith. She knows that everybody is important. So thank you for helping me this morning. And uh, we're now going to sing um, hymn number 600, number 600, Spirit of God Unseen as the Wind, because the Queen's faith um, has a heavy emphasis on the Spirit of God within her.
first reading today is from Genesis chapter 11, reading from verses 1 to verse 9. The Tower of Babel. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. The choir will now sing the anthem, Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost. The second reading is from Acts, Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to verse 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, 
we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word, and to him be all honour, glory, and praise. We now sing hymn number 599, number 599, Holy Spirit, hear us. I remember quite vividly the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. I was in Primary 3 of Pentaskin Primary School and our teacher was Mrs. Anderson. At that time, we were still receiving bottles of milk to drink before playtime and we were all excited to see the special silver bottle tops celebrating the Queen's Silver Jubilee which, when I googled them last night, they're now collector's items. I also remember Mrs. Anderson giving us forms for our parents to fill out to receive a special presentation pack of the four stamps commissioned for the Queen's Silver Jubilee and how excited I was when I received the pack. Milk bottle tops and stamps. These are my memories of the special celebration on the 11th of May, 1977. And it's so hard to believe that 45 years later, here we are celebrating her Platinum Jubilee, 70 years of the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. Personally, 
I find the Queen a very comforting figure because amidst all the change of life in my lifetime, she has always been there with her bright colours and matching hat and her gloves and her handbag. Always there, constant and faithful. And whether we are royalists or not, we all have to admire her loyalty and commitment and also her deep faith, which she hasn't been frightened to share. Her deep faith, which drives her forward throughout all the seasons of her life and all the changes she has experienced within history. For although she has all the monetary wealth one could ask for or wish for, we know that money does not grant us immunity from the trials and the tribulations and also the tragedies of human life. From the loss of her 56-year-old father when she was just 25 years old, to the death of her daughter-in-law Diana in 1997 when she was only 36 years old, becoming a widow during lockdown and we all, our hearts were moved looking at her having to sit at her husband's funeral service all on her own. And of course, together with the more recent problems within our family, which we have all heard about through news and social media. Money and power set aside, which of course we know can bring with it its own trials and tribulations. The Queen has not had an easy life. And no doubt she would be the first to say that all the wealth in the world and all the power that comes with being the queen, ultimately, that isn't what makes one truly happy. But she has stuck it out. And she could have bowed out gracefully years ago as others before her have done. But no, she has chosen to remain faithful to her calling even when at the age of 96 she has every excuse to stay home and be waited on by others. You know, there's part of me that wants the Queen to live forever, for the world is a changing and often it changes too quickly for my liking, especially as I get older. And there's something so comforting about her presence just always being there in times of national celebration and also in times of national tragedy in her bright block colours and her gloves and her matching handbag and her stoic yet always dignified look. But the Queen is aware that one day, sooner rather than later, she will need to pass on the reins to her son Charles. And this transition is already subtly taking place, with Charles now taking over more of her official engagements. And so we have been fortunate to have her as our queen for 70 years, but we know that she will not be with us forever. We know she will not be with us forever. But there is one person who is with us forever, a person who was at our birth and who will be at our death and who will see us safely through into life everlasting, a person who cradles us when we are hurting, who rejoices with us when we are happy, who guides us when we are unsure. And this is the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, whether you call the Holy Spirit a he or a she, the Holy Spirit is beyond gender, all-encompassing, all-inclusive, all-pervading, always with us this day and forevermore. And today's scripture readings point to the work of this third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. In the reading from the Old Testament, we find out what happens when people forget that we are actually all united as one under this superpower of God's infinite love and unending grace. In the story of the Tower of Babel, we hear that at one time the whole earth had one language and shared the same words. And we are told that human beings wanted more 
They wanted to be greater than God. They wanted to split into rival tribes, with one tribe being much greater than the other. And so some decide that they will build a tower, a tower so high that it will reach the heavens, because they want to be recognized by God as special and more important than the others. And the story tells us that God sees the tower and God is sad. And so in a sense, God gives them what they wish. Their language becomes confused so they cannot understand one another and they thus become split into tribes and are scattered over all the corners of the earth. And then moving on to the reading in Acts, we hear of the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, where the Perthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Romans, Arabs, they all hear their own language being spoken by the disciples. This language that was divided in the ancient times of the Tower of Babel, they now hear their own language being spoken by the disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, restoring and uniting humanity back as one to what God always intended it to be before the division which emerged following the construction of the Tower of Babel. The Spirit abundantly fills all people, sons and daughters, young men and old men. As Peter says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The Queen, although a faithful and constant presence in our national life over the last 70 years, knows that she will not be here forever, as the majestic hymn, Immortal and Visible, says. She knows that we blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, but wither and perish, but not changeth thee. But the Spirit remains with us in life, and the Spirit will be with us forevermore. Does that comfort us in a world which is forever changing? When over the last 20 years, technology has changed how we work and how we play and how we interact with others. For even the Queen has had to get a Facebook page. In a world where war has recently broken out in Europe and climate change does seem to be increasing despite our best efforts, in a world where we are all being hit hard with increased energy bills and the cost of everyday items. The Spirit remains with us throughout it all. The Spirit is forever with us. The Spirit is with us when we transition through a new life stage, when we welcome a baby into the family or when children grow up and leave home. The Spirit is with us when we start a new job or when we retire, the Spirit is with us. When our health fails and our mood becomes low, the Spirit is with us. When we meet a new friend or start a new venture, the Spirit is with us forevermore. But it can be difficult to understand the Holy Spirit, this third person of the Trinity, which according to Acts comes through wind and flame. But perhaps we can try to understand it as an energy which was present with you when you were born. That time that you can't remember when you were welcomed and cradled and held and loved in these first few weeks and months of your life. As the hymn for the beauty of the earth describes, it says, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. We cannot remember our birth or these first early years, but the Spirit was there with us. 
Or perhaps we can try and understand the spirit as being that gentle voice within, that inner nudge, that pang of conscience, which prods us to take a specific course of action, or it guides us to take the next right step, or it stirs within us a desire to help another. The spirit is a bit like a chameleon and communicates with each one of us in many diverse ways, but each one of us is unique. And the spirit encompasses all humanity. It brings people of different faiths or none, different cultures, different countries together. And we see this in the magnificent celebrations this weekend to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. For what a sight it was as the Queen stood on the Buckingham Palace balcony and saw thousands upon thousands of people standing together in celebration and with good wishes in the mall. The Spirit always seeks to bring unity and heal division. The division which emerged after that first Tower of Babel was constructed in the ancient human times. The Spirit is with us forevermore. And part of our purpose in life is to enable it to be fulfilled within us, in our life and actions, always striving for unity and peace. For we do not need to build towers of Babel. We do not need to divide into tribes. We do not need to build something so tall that it reaches into the heavens for God to recognize each one of us and to know how special we are to him. For the Spirit dwells within each one of us, and that is enough evidence of God's love for us. For God sees us, God notices us, God recognizes us, always. The Queen has all the wealth and the power in the world. But she knows that this is not what makes you happy. And she has had her own trials and tribulations and tragedies within her life. But she has chosen to be faithful to God's calling in her life and allow the spirit to be manifested in her words and actions. And she has brought a spirit of unity amongst nations and people of all faiths and none. And so I want to end today with some of her words. And she says, As a daughter of the king and queen of my home, I trust the Holy Spirit in all things. And I wear my crown proudly, knowing that he is at work in and through me. And so as we continue to celebrate her Platinum Jubilee this weekend, may we too be inspired by her faith and witness to the Holy Spirit, who in a world of constant change and challenge is with each one of us forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now sing hymn number 584, number 584, like fireworks in the night.
for our prayers for others, it's with sadness that I intimate the death of Mr. Mr. George King, whose daughter and son-in-law, Ailey and Gavin, are members of our church here. George's funeral takes place this Friday here in the church at 11 o'clock and thereafter at Daldawi. George was a paramedic and he sadly died earlier in the week um, in the line of duty. And we especially remember his wife, Alison, in our prayers at this sad time. So let us pray. Loving God, you give us so much. Our homes, our food and our clothing. Money for holidays and leisure pursuits and gifts for family and friends. But help us always to remember that you call us to share what we have with your work for the world and to further the gospel. And so take what we offer and bless it and use it to proclaim your love and healing and comfort through your church to those who need it most. And Lord, we now remember this day, our Queen, and we pray the prayer which the Church of Scotland has given us to pray, which says, Eternal God, in these days of national celebration, we give thanks for the long reign of Her Majesty the Queen, for her commitment to serve all her people, for her steadiness in every crisis, for her loyalty to the nation and to the Commonwealth, and for the pledge she has made and kept to honour all people. Faithful God, we give thanks for those who have supported her Queen in the fulfilment of her work, for the affection and example of her parents, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, for the family who have accompanied her along the way, and for the devotion of her staff, receive our grateful thanks. And we especially recall with gratitude the love and strength and support of the Duke of Edinburgh, husband and trusted companion, through 73 years of marriage. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on the Queen as she continues her work amongst us. Sustain and strengthen her in these later years and bless those who support her, shouldering new and increased responsibilities. Inspire them in us to continue to lead and serve according to her example. But loving God, we bless you most importantly for the faith of Elizabeth, her devotion to our Lord, her unashamed witness to his cause, her love of his church, and her commitment to its worship. And so may we in our day and generation continue in faith and dedication to the same Lord in whose name we offer these prayers. Loving God, on this day of Pentecost, help us to recognize the work of your Spirit in your world and in others, so often beyond the walls of your church. We pray for those who have deep faith or none, who work tirelessly for justice, who seek to free the oppressed, who campaign for human rights and who fundraise for good and noble causes. We pray for your spirit, which is present in the tenderness which surrounds a newborn and the same tenderness which surrounds those who are dying. For in life and in death, your spirit is with us, carrying us seamlessly into the next part of our journey. We pray for your spirit present when someone cares or shows love or takes the time to listen to someone. Your spirit manifested when goodness prevails and evil is overcome. Your spirit manifested when persons are shown dignity and honor that they deserve and respected for being a unique reflection of the divine. We pray for your spirit, Lord, which is doing new things now in your church, which is unwelcomely prodding and nudging us, jolting us and unsettling us, making us feel uncomfortable and at times disorientated. 
leading us into a liminal space between what was and what is to be, a space where new and fresh creativity, vision and energy can emerge, and new ways of being church can rise like a phoenix from the ashes of years of institutional decline. Holy God, whose spirit is everywhere, and we now pray for those whom we are concerned about. We pray for those who are in hospital and those whose skill and expertise cares for them. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one and for your spirit which is seen through the love and care of family and friends. We pray for those who are living with addiction or mental illness. And we pray for those who are weary and lonely and troubled. We pray for them knowing that you hear our prayers. And as we name them in the next few moments of silence, we know that your spirit touches them in ways far beyond our human understanding. God of Spirit, help us as we journey into this coming week to be open to your Spirit, to all the ways it guides and inspires us. And may we be comforted in the knowledge that we never journey through this life alone, for you are always a constant present with us, presence with us. Through your Spirit, you're always with us. And your grace is forever sufficient to meet our every need this day and forevermore. Amen. And we now sing our final hymn, number 594, number 594, Come Holy Spirit, Come.
share with you now a traditional platinum jubilee blessing. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen and the commonwealth and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you now and for evermore.